Hi everybody, welcome back. My name is Lynn and I'm Pretty Paper Craft 67. And today I'm going to make some cabinet cards. Some, yeah, some, I don't know, not, not traditional cabinet cards, but we're just going to have a play. But what's inspired me to make these cabinet cards are these, um, well, they're called wrapping paper. Now they're available over at Witchcraft Do You Do. Um, I'm on the website at the moment. Now these are in the dollar, the dollar um, section. Now there are two styles. They are low in stock. One says very low in stock. One says low in stock. But seriously, I just wanted to mention this because if you like them, they are really worth a dollar. They're worth so much more than a dollar. They are this massive sheet of vintage photographs cut apart. Now there's two styles. There's this style, which is the traditional, I suppose, you know, six, not quite six by four, but you know, five by three, something like that, whatever the measurement is. And then there's another um, listing for smaller ones. I do have the smaller ones also, but they're just not handy. But I just wanted to mention that if anybody is interested in these for a dollar, seriously go on over to witchcraft do you do and grab some they're very low in stock i will list them below in the description box but i bought some of these a little while ago and these are sort of what i've kind of uh, gotten some inspiration for some cabinet cards because i believe they are old photographs of cabinet cards or that style of thing so that is what we're using there so I have taken two of them and I've just I've just sewn around the edges. I have put them onto some um, cardboard that was in a Duna cover that I bought. So any sort of scrap cardboard, this is very much uh, just going through what I have. So I've gotten these two ready, done some messy machine stitching around them just because I like that look. For the backing boards, I'm using some book board. Now it's a it's nice thick board and it's sort of a heavy weight which a lot of the old traditional genuine vintage um, cabinet cards have got some weight to them so I thought we should sort of replicate that if you didn't have book board and what I mean by book board is um, sometimes at the back of your foolscap paper pad there is a, a thicker piece of cardboard on the back of my watercolor pads there's this thicker piece of cardboard so I've just pulled that out and it makes for a nice sturdy base and it kind of has that kind of old old world look about it I've gone through my embellishment stash and I've just picked out just some uh, dates and signatures and bits and pieces and we'll see what we can do with that for decoration um, but what I wanted to do traditionally cabinet cards are black they have a black background to them um, they sometimes sort of uh, inside a wallet that kind of thing but I've just got this beautiful paper pad that again I bought from the ladies at Witchcraft You Do it's a Stamperia background selection and it is Christmas but it's got some of these very lovely old style vintage um, designs on them which I thought we could maybe use as the backing to our cabinet cards that kind of thing this is such an easy project. It really takes no time at all. Um, so let's get in and have a look. I'm not sure if this one is still available. I will have a quick look before I um, load the video. And if it is, I'll put that down in the description box also. So I've cut my cut two pieces of board, uh, book board and it was sort of a piece like that. I've cut one slightly bigger than the other because this was the oval that I cut from the sheet and it takes less room than the square. So that's the only reason why one is cut bigger than the other. And you could use any kind of photograph at all, any kind of printable, and then obviously your sizes would adjust to the size of your photograph. Sorry if you can hear that, I'm right behind a school and they're mowing. All right, so basically all I'm going to do, and it's just so simple, I'm just going to cover my book board with um, some of this paper. So all I'm going to do is basically stick it down on top of it. I'm going to use um, art glitter glue just because I want it to be a little bit more sturdy. 
actually no I don't want to stick it straight down I want to cut it because I want to make the edges look old sorry guys so I'm just going to measure that to the um, size of my board and I'm just going to pop some marks I'll do both of them at the same time isn't that beautiful that just reminds me of old wallpaper I love it so I am taking it up fairly close to the edge, but I will be inking my edges, so um, if it's a little bit out, it doesn't matter too much. Alright, so I'm just going to, with my cutter, I'm just going to cut those to size. And how is everyone today? Tuesday. I keep thinking it's Monday because yesterday we had a public holiday here in Queensland. So every day at the moment is a Monday, but <laughs> I've got um, the, my, the Mother's Day afternoon tea this afternoon at my grandson's kindy, so I'm really looking forward to that. And uh, yeah, my daughter's doing much better, so um, yeah, I can get back into doing my bits and pieces. So there we go. It's just fitting just pretty close like that but before I stick it down I just want to really distress the edges of this paper a bit because it sort of reminds me of old wallpaper and I'm just going to go around with my fingernail I'm going to tear some areas and fold them back just really rough up those edges nothing fancy I do have a distressing tool somewhere but uh, yeah I don't know <laughs> I've got to go through some some drawers and some cupboards so I'm just going to go all the way around my sheet, just kind of tearing it in little places, roughing up those edges with my fingernail, just to make it look quite worn and older. And you, this is not necessary, see that's a nice big one there. And then I'm also going to hit that with a bit of distress stain, I was distress ink. So when that's down, it's going to look quite old. <clears throat> we'll go back ahead and we'll do it on this one as well. Like that. So yes, Tuesday today, everyone is at work. I'm finally home in my craft room. I'm doing well for my projects. I've just completed my clear scraps project. That's the American company. I'll have to do a video and show you what I... Um, the projects that I did for them, but I'm now finished with that. I was a guest design team member for the, their spring, they call, uh, season of spring in America. So this project that I've just completed marks the end of my time with them. And uh, that's great, actually. Lovely company to work with, but just that sort of having to do something all the time. So... So that is done, and uh, it opens up the door to just to, to have some fun. All right, so that's our two uh, background pages done, and I've roughed up the edges, and now I'm just going to put some ink around them before I just stick them down. And I do go a little heavy with the ink, and I don't mind that when you're doing vintage-influenced things, um, because, yeah, you want to kind of have that appearance of it being really old and as I go around I'm just going to keep playing breaking down the fibers on the edge of these panels just to give them that really old crinkly look so that's number one and then we'll do the same with this one Sorry if I get quiet. <laughs> I'm just concentrating. Don't really have much news to tell you guys because, as I said, I was away with helping out my daughter, um, but we sort of didn't really do or go anywhere because she was so unwell. So, so I don't really know much to tell you guys. I'm sorry. 
All right, so that is the backgrounds done. And as I said, I'm just going to use some art glitter glue and I'm just going to stick those down onto my book board. And I am going to take it up fairly close to my edges. Okay, so we'll put that one down first. And I, that one sort of doesn't have a direction. So I'm just going to pop it straight down on my book board like that. And I want to sort of keep those edges lifted and curl it, curled a bit where I've sort of distressed them. So before they stick down firmly, I'm just going to mark them a little bit, pull them back a bit from the edge, that sort of thing. And I'll just come in here. So that's the sort of look I'm looking for, just those really rough edges. I've torn some pieces out and then we'll do the same with this one. that one down onto this board. Really just leveling it up. Oops, leveling it up the best way I can. Just like that sort of thing there. Some of those areas that I've pulled back, I just want to stick them in behind. And again, I'll just pull up some of these rougher edges before I stick that, you know, down. Tuck that one in behind. Oh, it didn't work. And just like that. So they kind of look like an old wall with wallpaper. I love it. I love that. The cabinet cards, or you could even pretend that they were like photographs hanging on the wall. I'm going to pull that up. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back around the edges with um, the Distress Ink and I want to sort of colour up that, the edges of that book board. So I really need to get a re-inker or a new one of these because I'm really out. I've done the whole water thing and yeah, so it's probably not as dark as I would like it to be, but um, it'll still achieve that result. So I'm just going to go in onto that the cardboard, the book board, and, and sort of stain that as much as I can as well, down around those edges. And then, yeah, in those sections there where I've pulled the paper off, just giving it probably more than less, because I want that really old look. You could also, which I wish I had a thought of actually before I sat down, um, gold flakes foiling whatever it's called the, I've got the gilding flakes they would look really nice around the edges and I'm just going to go on the back I'm not going to cover the back because um, it's a nice surface to write on for a journal card or if you're going to use it if you're going to make one and use it as embellishing in your journal you won't see the back anyway so I'm just going to ink it up so that's number one, and then we'll go on to number two. I love those papers. Yeah, I'm just getting right in there and staining up that book board as best that I can. It takes colour quite well, the cardboard that you get on the back of your fool's cap pages or um, watercolour papers or art journals, that sort of thing. So it doesn't take much to to grab the ink. And then I'll just do around the back again. I know inking can be a little boring, but sometimes it's all part of the process and it all leads to the end result, I think. All right, so that is our book board done. 
our backgrounds done. And I just love how thick that is and how sturdy that is. That's really nice. These could even make a beautiful cover for a journal, a cover, a journal topper. All right, so I've got our photographs and all I'm going to do is just mount them straight on the top kind of thing like that. But again, before I do that, I just want to rough up around the edges of the photographs again. The sewing that I've done on them will stop any tearing, unfortunately, but that's okay. If I just go around and soften those edges up, just make it look a little older. feels a little probably a few tears would have been good but you know I just wanted to put in that sewing element and there's a tear and we'll do another one down here just like that sort of thing and then I'm going to put that there and I'm going to do the same with this one a distress tool is certainly an easier way um, and like I said, I do have them. <laughs> I just don't know where. So I cleaned um, when I wasn't sort of feeling very creative. I did spend a lot of time tidying up and sorting through and throwing away um, sort of things in my craft room. And of course, in doing that, I have tidied up and now I don't know where anything is. <laughs> So it's now a game of what's in this box. All right, so I like that. That's sort of torn in places, a little bit shaggy around the edges. And then that's... No, I like it. This one's the bigger print. So, all right. So now I just kind of want to centre that. Now, I'm, I'm sort of not sure if I want to pop it up onto some foam tape so that it's like really floating or if those maybe I won't stick it down completely I'll just do the middle and then that way it will give the effect of floating and I want those strings just cutting them a little bit but I want those strings out and long I think I'll just use art glitter glue and I'm just going to, maybe I'll just go in the centre instead of all the way to the edge and that way the edge won't stick down. Huh, but before I do that, I want to ink. <laughs> Alright, so we'll just quickly ink around the edges. We might get time with the art glitter glue before it dries. It's a little bit rainy here today so it's not much heat and again I'm just probably doing more than less ink because I just want it to look old now I've definitely got gluey fingers I'll just try and get some of that off a bit more blue and then I'm just going to pop that down around about there now I should have cut this book board just a little bit bigger because I do want to put some dates and things on but that's okay we'll just end up having to stick them onto the photograph instead of onto the base so that's okay I'm just going to pull these out the strings out A bit of a burnish, bring those back up. Just like that. I love that. And it's really sturdy. So that's number one. We'll ink up this one. Um, there are many, many, many videos on cabinet cards on YouTube. And some beautiful cabinet cards probably more traditional cabinet cards so if you are interested in doing them have a look on YouTube there are 
many more. This is just my little idea, my little take on it. I have done them more, more sort of authentic in the past, but I just wanted to use this paper. And we'll just kind of stick her down as well. Pull the strings out. And pop her down. And she's got some, she's got good space around her. Oh. And straight is always a good option. <laughs> All right. All right, so that is that. And now it's really, as I said, it's such a simple little craft. Um, now I'm just wanting to embellish with some dates and things. So I've just gone through my, um, I've got a, a, a little box full of this kind of ephemera little pieces. And I did find, I've got two of these. Now I don't remember what I've cut them from, but they are from, an actual cabinet card so I've got that one and I've got this one here so I haven't given myself much room there so we might just do that so that could make them look a little bit more original like a cabinet card so I'm just going to pop a bit of ink down around the edges of these and we'll put them in place I kind of want to level that up as best I can to the middle, sort of. We'll do the same with this one. This one is a little harder to see, um, but I think putting it down on the photograph helps it to sort of pop out a bit. So we'll put that one there. Again, I'm just going to try and level that up as best I can. Like that. Now, what else we've got? We've got dates. So that May the 15th, May the 15th, 1888. We could do something like that. What is this one? We've got some signature signatures here from different printables. So we could put something like that to say who she might be. Um, what else have I got? There's another date, May 23rd, 1919. We could just sort of put something like that there maybe. Um, and what else did I want? I'm pretty happy with that date. I like a number. We could put a number like that in behind. If we have a better number. We've got these little numbers. These are from a printable, I think one of the freebies from Witchcraft Do You Do. Um, I'm just seeing if I've got a bigger number. Um, I don't mind that either, actually. I'll cut one of these small ones. Now, do we want a reference or do we want just a straight number? I think we'll just go a straight number just to see if we like this better than what we've got. Take that one away. I hope I'm in frame. <laughs> and put that, I do, yes, I like that better. It's neater, it's more, more to style. And I like that. And I think I like that. I think that would, that would be what I would like. Done. All right, so we'll just put some ink around these elements can't pick it up and we'll put some ink on this one and ink on this little one All right, and I'll just tidy up here just quickly. So 
things don't fall everywhere on the floor. All right, so I'll bring these in now more in the centre. Grab my glue and I'll just pop these down. Sorry if you can hear my table squeaking. And then we've got this date, 15th of May, 1988. Like that. That's even straight. Straight enough. And then we'll do this one here. And I'm going to lay that down the side. That. and then the signature here which is Vivian something so she could be a Vivian she looks like a Vivian and I'm just going to pop that right in the center there all right now what the only thing other that I would like to put on is I've got some of these really cute little white buttons they're very sweet and I just thought maybe we could just embellish them with a bit of a run of buttons. Two is probably good. We could put in maybe one, two, just on the edges there. I like that. So we'll put those on as well. Grab some glue. This is always a fiddly task. For me one two and one Put that over a bit and two like that and then you could still punch a hole and put a string through them for a journal tag or a card to slip in a pocket. Or as I said, they could make really nice journal toppers because they're nice and sturdy and hard. So there you go, guys. Just a real simple, easy little idea for a faux cabinet card. Um, and as I said, don't forget to check out if you, if you like these. I'll just refresh at the minute and see if those figures have changed. Uh, seven units of this one left and five units of the smaller one. So a dollar a sheet. Great value. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, I hope that's of interest to somebody. Um, please stay safe and well, and I'll see you all again soon. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.